Hi everyone, I'm currently at Fort Bellefontaine in St. Louis County, Missouri. And before we get started on our nature walk, I just want to give you a little bit of background information on Fort Bellefontaine. So Fort Bellefontaine was established in 1805 and it was the first military installation to the west of the Mississippi River. And Lewis and Clark visited here multiple times. All right, so now let's go ahead and find some plants and learn a bit about them. Alrighty, here on the grand staircase hiding in the shade, I found an Asiatic day flower, which based on the name, you may have guessed that it's native to Asia. Now the Asiatic day flower is common in gardens and it typically escapes. So if you have it planted in your garden, please watch it closely. Now day flowers have these Mickey Mouse ears. So they have two petals that look kind of like ears. And in this case, these ones are blue. So yeah, they have these two little blue ears. All right, here's a shot of the grand staircase. There's a staircase going down on this side, and then there's also another on the other side. I think this is awesome that it's been standing for so long. And then here's a shot of the Missouri River, and this is the correct river this time, I promise. And then here is the top of the grand staircase. They've got a nice little fire pit up here, and then there's even a little picnic bench up here as well. So yeah, let's go see what other plants we can find though. Here we have butterfly weed, which is a member of the milkweed family. And milkweeds typically have a white milky sap, but butterfly weed actually has a clear sap. But we're not going to break this open to look at its sap, but just know it has a clear sap. Now another way we can distinguish it from other milkweeds is that it has these beautiful orange to yellow flowers, which are probably the first thing that you noticed. And these orange to yellow flowers are very popular amongst gardeners and they're very attractive to monarch butterflies and other pollinators because they're chock full of nectar. Now let's go see what other plants that we can find. Alrighty, here we have a bunch of yellow ironweed. This is all yellow ironweed back here. So yellow ironweed looks like it's in the sunflower family, but it actually isn't. In a way that we can tell that this is yellow ironweed and not something else, is that it has these winged stems. So its stems have these little tiny protrusions on them that look like wings. See that? All right, let's go see what else we can find. All right, here we have fall strawberry and luckily we have its flowers and its fruits and its fruits look just like actual strawberries except they're smaller and more round. So the flower of fall strawberry is yellow, whereas an actual strawberry's flower is going to be white. Now it, the fruit of fall strawberry doesn't really taste like much. They are edible, they're just very watery. Whereas the fruits of an actual strawberry are larger and they do have a very nice taste to them. Now fall strawberry will form mats of itself like such. You can see this very mat-like form right here and they'll choke out other plants around them. So native plants are in danger if this fall strawberry is planted around it. So you'll wanna pluck it out if you see it. So someone else that was walking let me know that there are more ruins here at the park and here are some of them. We're gonna go see some more of them before we find some more plants but I think this was maybe like some sort of stage or something like that, but I could be very wrong. I probably am very wrong, but if you know what it's supposed to be, please let me know down in the comments so that I can be corrected. Um, but yeah, I think this is super cool. It's covered in vegetation. There's a bunch of rocks and bricks. I just think it's all around, it's very pretty. But anyway, let's go see what else we can find. Alrighty, here we have Great Water Leaf, which is a light purple, light blue flower that grows in moist areas, such as right next to the Missouri River. And this species can be quite difficult to distinguish from other members in its genus. But if we take a look at its calyx, it'll let us zoom in. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it, but its calyx has little spikes on it. You can kind of see it. And Great Water Leaf is the only member of its genus in this area that has spikes on its calyx. So that's how you can tell that it is Great Water Leaf and not a member of its genus. Another thing about Great Water Leaf is that it has leaves that kind of look like maple leaves, so they can kind of be confused for uh, a maple sapling. This one looks more so like a maple leaf than this one. This one's more lobed in a weird way. 
here we are at our next ruin location which this one is pretty cool i think it's cooler than the last location we're going into this house looking area i have no idea what this what this area is supposed to be i guess it's part of the fort uh, again if you know in the comments please let me know um but here is a nice wooden door frame i know very interesting but here is some pipes i i guess they had some plumbing in here uh, it's covered in plants. They got some metal grates on the windows, which is pretty cool. Um, got a bunch of plants in here. They're just filling the area. Looks so cool. So better watch out if you're coming to explore this area. Got these awesome pillars. I love them. They look so cool. But I think we've got another one of those houses over here. We're going to go look at that see if it's the same as the one we just went and looked at. Got these window looking things that go straight into a hill. All right, let's see if this is the same thing. Got more pipes. Got more bars on the window, so we got a little plant growing up here, so that's pretty awesome. And look what we have here. Got some plants growing into the rocks. That's that's pretty cool. Alright. Well, I think that about covers this ruin site. I don't think there's much more going on over here. So we got an American basswood in the center, so that's what we got. But yeah, let's go see what other ruins and or plants we can find. All right, here we have Ohio Horse Mint, which is in the mint family and has these stacked lavender inflorescences. Since this species is in the mint family, it is pretty fragrant. And if you take one of these leaves and crumple it up, it'll smell like oregano. So that can be a pretty good identifier. Also, one of this species' closely related relatives is the woolly uh, wood mint. And that species can sometimes be confused for this one. So a way to distinguish that one from this one is that this one smells like oregano and the other species smells more like mint. Also, this species has stacked lavender inflorescences most of the time and um, the other species will have stacked white inflorescences most of the time. So yeah, there we go. Here we have a Sweet Bay Magnolia, which is very pretty and very fragrant. I'm standing pretty far away from it and it smells very good. It smells like a very floral soap. Um, what's really interesting about Magnolia flowers is they have a cluster of these pistils right here. You can clearly see all these little pistils shooting up and then they have all of their little stamens surrounding their pistils so that these pistils can't be pollinated by the stamen, but they get outcross pollinated by other stamen. Now, if we take a look at the fruits they produce, here is a fruit from last year. They form these cone-like aggregates of their fruits. And they actually don't have any of the fruits um, left inside of this cone-like uh, structure, but it's just neat seeing uh, the little husk left over. But what's also cool is they have these really shiny leaves that are semi evergreen. So what that means is that they'll hold on to their leaves for a really long time and they'll look green throughout a lot of the winter time and they'll drop them for a very short period of time then grow them back pretty quickly. Here we have this huge sycamore tree. This thing is just gigantic. Now, sycamores have leaves that look very similar to that of a maple leaf. So this leaf right here looks very similar to a sugar maple leaf. And that can get a bit confusing, but the bark of a sycamore, there's no mistaking any other tree for a sycamore when you look at this bark. The bark of a sycamore has this camo uh, sort of pattern to it. And you can even see hints of orange occasionally, unlike really old trees but this is just wild. Um, there's this saying that it looks this way because it's sick, but they're not sick, but it's a good way to remember it. Um, you can just be like, oh, sick sycamore. So yeah, here we've got our sycamore.
Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the nature walk at Fort Bellafontaine. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in the future.